8 a.m. I to I for a Brexit breakfast time meeting and one thing on the menu. <laughs> Wicks Manor make gourmet sausages and lots of them. 20,000 every single day. But come July 1st, a grace period for the Northern Ireland Protocol ends and butchers in Belfast and elsewhere become a no-go zone for sausages or chilled meat products made in Great Britain. Rules which aren't going down well with farmers. Whether you're a Scottish potato farmer trying to get seed potatoes into Northern Ireland or whether you're a processor of fresh meat, it's madness that we can't supply one part of the United Kingdom with another part of the United Kingdom. And we've got to override, overrule these protocols. Boris is on the right lines. He needs to flood Northern Ireland with British sausage and make the EU choke on them. Enter the EU's Brexit chief, Maris Sefcovic, fresh from talks, hope to resolve this issue. How did they go? Trust which should be at the heart of every partnership, needs to be restored. And then a warning. If the UK were to take further unilateral action over the coming weeks, the EU will not be shy in reacting swiftly, firmly and resolutely to ensure that the UK abides by its international law obligations. Those swift sanctions could include legal action, he explained, or retaliatory trade measures such as tariffs. Under Brexit, chilled meat products like sausages and mints have been banned from entering the EU since the 1st of January, while the Northern Ireland Protocol puts an EU bureaucratic border for goods travelling between Great Britain and Northern Ireland in the Irish Sea. A six-month grace period was agreed to allow those products like sausages and chicken nuggets into Northern Ireland from Britain. But as of July 1st, that ends, and British fresh sausage exports to Northern Ireland would be banned. Just one flashpoint in a number of obstacles presented by the protocol. The government says the protocol has thrown up more issues than they foresaw and are looking for creative solutions. Be that as it may, says the EU, it's a protocol the UK negotiated and agreed to. I mean, how do you expect the EU to do business with you when you go back on your word like this? So this, the situation in Northern Ireland is a sensitive uh, one and the protocol is, is delicately balanced to support it. We don't see what risk is caused to Northern Ireland if chilled meats are imported there from GB. But will you allow those exports to continue regardless of what the EU says? So as I said, we continue to, con to consider all our options on that and other issues. What we want is something that uh, enables us to protect uh, trade flows uh, east-west as well as, uh, as, well as north-south, and I'm, that's easily doable. I'm very, very optimistic about this. The language used by the UK and the EU is still couched in diplomatic terms, both sides eager to find a solution. But behind closed doors, an EU source tells us they left this morning's meeting with Lord Frost bitterly disappointed and angry. This may be a new round of talks, they said, but the UK brought nothing substantively new to the table. And something new is needed to stop any more scenes like this. Sectarian violence on the streets of Belfast in April, fueled by the prospect of Northern Ireland being treated differently to the rest of the UK. Are you really willing to put peace in Northern Ireland at risk over the checks on meat? EU is a peace project and peace for us is of, uh, as I said, uh, paramount importance and we have absolute commitment uh, uh, we have absolute commitment to peace. Therefore, we went at unprecedented great length uh, to agree uh, that the, the checks will be done by the UK authorities uh, in the Northern Ireland. The business community in Northern Ireland says politics is getting in the way of pragmatism. They want and need solutions quick. They've got to decide between them in a pragmatic way what is going into Northern Ireland versus what is going through Northern Ireland. What we'd say is sit back down and make it work. That's your jobs. With three weeks to go until the grace period ends and a history of deals being struck at the last minute, these negotiations may linger. In the meantime, the old saying about sausages is equally applicable to Brexit deals. Rarely do you want to find out how they're made. Well, our political editor, Gary Gibbon, is in Cornwall ahead of the G7 summit. Gary. This is extraordinary timing, this spat. Here is Britain in Cornwall trying to showcase post-Brexit Britain, global Britain, trusted international player, showcasing it here just as this spat fires up. 
And uh, you can uh, imagine the horror of President Biden on his uh, flight on his way over here. His first overseas uh, uh, mission out of the United States since he became uh, president. He's over here uh, to try and show how demo democratic countries can work together. And here are these uh, two sides squabbling. I say two sides because one of the interesting things about the numbers in the room is that the G7 includes uh, three uh, EU national leaders. There are actually two other heavies from the uh, EU in the uh, room as well for the entire uh, summit, the European Council President and the uh, European Commission President. Uh, and those people clearly don't trust uh, Boris Johnson in, uh, on the way he is handling Brexit. Uh, the UK is, for its part, saying that the EU is being prissy, legalistic and in danger of upsetting certain elements of the unionist uh, population uh, in Northern Ireland uh, and inciting violence because of that. Uh, one other interesting thing that's emerging uh, out of uh, chats with people uh, in uh, the EU capitals is a consensus that has formed that Boris Johnson uh, didn't pull the plug on these uh, talks today, didn't unilaterally uh, tear up elements of the agreement as the EU would see it, but they think when it's wheels up for Air Force One leaving Britain and leaving Europe, he's got another phase to this mission uh, while he's uh, over here, they are saying it is probable, not possible, but probable they think, that then Boris Johnson will actually properly rip up the agreement soon after uh, those wheels are up. And that is their current thinking. That is the atmosphere of squabbling that President Biden is walking into as he tries to uh, get people talking about democratic country cooperation on COVID, on China and on climate change. Thanks, Gary. Well, joining me now is Stephen Kelly, who's chief executive of Manufacturing Northern Ireland. He shared a video in 2019, which is now famous, when Boris Johnson assured a group of Northern Ireland Conservatives that everything would work in NI post-Brexit. Absolutely not happen. And if somebody asked you to do that, tell them to ring up the Prime Minister and I will direct them to throw that form in the bin. Well, Stephen Kelly, I mean, what do you make of Boris Johnson's promises from that night? Um, I think your mic, your mic might be muted. Can you try unmuting yourself? To be fair to the Prime Minister, the, uh, the promise there was about goods travelling from Northern Ireland into the rest of the UK, and that has been delivered. We have unfettered access into the UK market. The challenge that we have here is that there are goods going in the opposite direction uh, from Great Britain into Northern yeah. Ireland. I, I mean, that, that was that a promise he access. also made after that night. He was asked specifically that, about that, yeah. That, that's correct. He asked. Uh, he did give commitments uh, that come in the opposite direction as well. And I can tell you, Krishnan, that uh, our businesses are still saying that goods travelling from Northern to GB unfettered is fine. But the friction that's been created on the Irish Sea in the opposite direction, particularly where Britain is used as a place for warehousing and for distribution, is causing very significant strain onto not only business but civic life here in Northern Ireland. And so, what, what, I mean, when you hear you know, Gary Gibbon saying, look, Boris Johnson might tear up the agreement, what do you think? What would that mean? Well, I mean, a lot of the narrative today is around uh, sausages travelling to Northern Ireland. And what I can say is that the one thing that will stop the British banger arriving in Northern Ireland quickest will be legal uncertainty. So if, if this is a solution that may be potentially proposed uh, to allow that sausage to continue to travel, then it's going to absolutely fail on arrival. Uh, what we need is both sides to get over the tug of war around Northern Ireland. Uh, we're feeling very much like the rope at the moment. And the sad thing about a rope and a tug of war battle is that eventually it may snap. Uh, and what we need is pragmatic solutions. We need action really, really quickly. And we need action from both sides because both have the opportunity here to stretch themselves a little bit further, to make the protocol work, to settle down and decompress the politics in Northern Ireland and let business get on with what it does best, which is moving goods and selling those at markets at home and abroad. But do you, do you accept that what the deal did sign Britain up for was some checks between Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and that those checks will need to be brought in? We do, and we're absolutely uh, operating those at the moment. I can tell you now that uh, there isn't a manufacturer, in fact, there isn't a business in Northern Ireland that isn't feeling the implications of those checks. It is uh, friction that is unwelcome, but it's friction that we've accepted. 
business gets on with uh, the business of business. Uh, but what we do need is those checks to be simplified, the cost of that to be removed. But more particularly, we need political stability here in Northern Ireland. And we need certainty in terms of the long term so that we can ensure that our people are well paid and that Northern Ireland can prosper. And do you fear for the peace? I don't think you uh, need to look too far back in the last number of months to see how things can quite quickly escalate in a place like Northern Ireland. We're coming into a very difficult summer period. It's always been difficult. Uh, and I think that the politics around what's happening at the moment certainly are poisoning uh, the relationships on the streets and here in Northern Ireland. So we need both sides to really understand the implications of what's going on in the, in the last number of days uh, to get back around the table before the end of this month and agree some pragmatic solutions that will decompress the politics. Stephen Kelly, thank you very much indeed. Well, joining me now is Philip Rycroft, who was Permanent Secretary for the Department for Exiting the EU from 2017 until 2019. Philip Rycroft, what do you think is going on here? Well, we have a difficult problem, don't we? Uh, there has been a draining of trust from this exercise. It's never really got into a rhythm where the two sides can sort out the evident issues around handling the border. And until that trust is restored, it's difficult to see how we're going to find a solution to what is a really, really tough problem and, and a very dangerous problem. The Prime Minister and Lord Frost have been saying, well, I mean, much of this was unforeseen. Was it unforeseen in government, really? I, I, the, the deal that was, uh, that was signed around the Northern Ireland Protocol, the UK government would have had a very good understanding of the implications of that. We, you know, the work I did in, in government uh, with, the, with the great team that I had there, we knew what the implications of a border with the EU uh, would be, and particularly for agri-food products, uh, and, of course, that applies to anywhere where there's a border between the UK and the EU. Uh, but by extension, that applies to the border between GB and Northern Ireland, if that's where the checks were going to take place. There is an issue, of course, around the supermarket lorries, where you have hundreds of products in one load, which complicates the situation. Uh, but this is a simple question of maths. If you've got one load, it's one form. If you've got hundreds of products on a load, it means hundreds of forms. So all of this um, uh, was predictable, and I think it's disingenuous to suggest otherwise. And is the UK currently not doing what it signed up to do? Well, I, the, the detail of that, of course, is there's two in and frame between the Commission and the UK government, um, and the UK government saying we're doing our best, and the EU, EU Commission saying you're not doing enough and they seem to have been slow on building the border inspection posts, slow on opening up the systems, the custom systems, so the EU side can see what's going on. The UK saying actually we've, you know, we've put in place four new IT systems and all the rest of it. And the, the truth of the matter, I suspect, is the UK has not moved as fast as the European Commission would have wished and has not moved as fast as is required uh, to get this thing working on the ground. Hence, already, that we've seen the unilateral extension of grace periods and the risk of another unilateral extension coming up uh, in a few weeks' time. I guess a lot of casual observers might say, look at some sausages and chicken nuggets. Why can't the EU use some common sense and say we don't need to check them all? The, of course, there is, a, there, is a, there is an issue of proportionality here, and, and frankly, Sausages exported for consumption uh, in, in, from GB into Northern Ireland for consumption in Northern Ireland do not pose an existential risk to uh, the consumer in the EU. But you've got to remember when the, e the UK side talks about legal pur purism and all the rest of it, the EU is a legal construct. Uh, the single market depends on a framework of law that is sustainable across the 27 member states. And the UK is now a third country coming along saying, well, can't you relax your rules uh, to suit us? Just doesn't go down well. Uh, you know, folk who've been who argued for Brexit have complained for years about that construct of law. So they should understand that fine well. That's how it works. But within that framework of law, I think what we can all agree, the Commission, European Union has to look as hard as it can for flexibility to ensure that it's dealing with the risk in a proportionate manner.